Showing their ability to side out here, 11 eights. And you're going to see with Odie, you're not going to see anything super hard, high, bouncing balls over top of the block. But man, she can tool it. She can see her way around it. It's at all of that international experience that she has that she's bringing to Team De La Cruz right now. Speaks parts of seven languages. Her native language is Russian, but also speaks some Uzbek. She's originally from Uzbekistan. Depending upon the part, you can speak either Russian or Uzbek or a whole bunch of different parts of languages. But Nice dig by Wanabu. Pushed through and out by Bethania De La Cruz. Ebony, Ebony Wanabu's defense has been outstanding. She's 104 digs on the season. It has been outstanding. And this is an open net swing right now. You see Bree King takes a look over at the other side of the net. Taylor Morgan, Morgan has room, but Wanabu's still able to dig the ball. Super yeah. impressive. That was actually Bethania De La Cruz who clipped the net on the follow through. Wanabu out of the back and into the middle of the court. I'll tell you what, Ebony is doing so well. She did, did this earlier already this match. She's coming in full steam ahead. She looks like she's going to bounce that ball. I'm right behind the court and everyone's on their heels and she just drops that ball in over the top. Wanabu comes in hitting 240 on the season. There have been long stretches where number 95 is near unstoppable. That was a laser to Tupac. Cruz tries to chip her way out and cannot do it. Yeah, as soon as that ball's on its way back down, she's raising her hand like that was my, my error. She took a look, tried to survey the block, see what she had in front of her, and just couldn't chip around it. Bastianelli hit a good one last time. That one goes long. Kristen Tupac tells herself it went long. I mean, that's what you have to do. You got to talk to yourself, follow the ball all the way out of bounds. Here's a look at Salima along the end line. Salima Rockwell, of course, on the national team for a number of years, and then on to coach. Penn State and Texas national titles at both. Betty Dela Cruz dug off the block. Stalls her with a nice read down the line. A charging Bree King picks that one up. Cruz through the block and down. Team King finally getting ahead of it. So you Bree King and Lindsay Stalls are keeping the ball alive, keep making things happen, reading the plays, and that's what they need to do. You see Batania Dela Cruz, that ball drops a little bit. You know she's going to probably chop it somewhere, and she chops it deep line. Stalls are with a nice read. To the fans on Twitch who are wondering if the Book of Unlimited is actually in the arena, the answer is yes, and they will not let me touch it. <laughs> I wanted to go and just, you know, scribble some stuff in it, maybe sign it. I can go near it. Yeah. I'm going. Look. I'll show you, Twitch people. Yeah, Salima's headed there. There is the I'm book. Jogging. Well lit. I'm actually jogging. Yeah. <laughs> There's Salima. There's the book. And what's next to the book there? There are the medals for first through fourth place and the defensive player of the year as well. Yeah, beautiful pieces, handmade. A serve there from Bree King. Both the book and those medals handcrafted. Designed to be heirlooms of what is not just a volleyball league. Remember, lacrosse is coming up, and softball will be back again in the fall. Kat Osterman won the inaugural season of that. A lot of names inscribed. A lot of. This is just a beautiful book. It's 20, almost 25 pounds, Kevin. I didn't realize that. That's why I didn't pick it up. Yeah, that's what I figured. Okay, I'm out of here. A little sit down from Hunter. That's usually Bree King's move. First player I saw do that a bunch was James Shaw when he played for Stanford. All American who has now gone to the beach game after a number of years in Italy. And she's like Kelly Hunter, national champion in 2017 at Nebraska. That illustrious program under the guidance of Terry Pettit originally, and now John Cook for so many years. 
Colston dug up. Nice set by Sambothi. Cruz, and what a beautiful, deliberate effort. Really nice pickup by, by Kristen Tupac, who's just flying around, making those defensive plays, but it's Ari Cruz. That finishes it. Look at, look at her. She's fighting for that Defensive Player of the Year award. $5,000 go along with that. Right go Defensive Player of the Year. Morgan getting ready in the middle. Betty on the right is too long. So now it is Team King with a two-point lead at 16-14. We've hit our technical timeout. Ladies and gentlemen, please be aware of COVID protocols. All staff must maintain distance. Now, must be worn at all times. With Anya De La Cruz, this is another one of her opportunities to be captain. What was the strategy going into championship weekend, Bethania? My strategy is to finish this amazing league with the team who can enjoy and do your best and just have fun. To have fun and recapture the team. I mean, this is the team that goes all the way back to week two with a lot of the same stars, Salima Rockwell. Well, I think that's what she wanted to do. She wanted to recreate some of the things you talked about. What did they learn over the course of this league? Who do you want to choose? Who do you want to play with? Of course, Ebony Wanabu has almost been everyone's number one pick. She's certainly gone in the first round if she hasn't been a captain. And there's a reason. I mean, she just balances that side of the court. You need someone that could bang it on the right side, score consistently. But it's been her defense that's really been a, a pleasant surprise, I think, to everyone here in the league. Yeah, sitting fifth in total points, but the race is tight amongst the league leaders and has been a first round draft pick on multiple occasions. That defensive presence, as you mentioned, a little bit unexpected. If we look at the point standings and where she is, Ebony Wanabo is definitely within striking distance of Bethany De La Cruz, but that's going to be hard if you're on the same team. That's going to be really hard. <laughs> you're you're going to get the same win points, so there's that. Uh, she'd have to really outscore in a million different ways. Yeah, but she sits about 200 points behind Bree King, as you look at our Geico leaderboard coming into the evening. Just behind Bree King, and reasonably within reach of Carcelo if Team Dela Cruz has a weekend like they did last week. Well, and I think that that's the key, is how many sets are they going to win? Can they win a full match? Because every single set and every single match, all those points matter so greatly. If you win 180 points once and then again, I mean, that's big. Those are big, big points in addition to what you're doing individually. So there's absolutely a chance that she could, she could sneak up there. Our Geico leaderboard will continue to update you on that as we go through not only tonight, but also Sunday and Monday. And we'll be Championship Monday here at Athletes Unlimited. Fans, you want to be there for that, but even before then, you have the opportunity to get even closer to the game. You can join the Unlimited Club for free and select your favorite player. You can also unlock special access, additional content, and more. Make your Geico Unlimited pick as well. You can look for even more if you upgrade your membership for a whole year of behind-the-scenes access. And you can join the players in voting for game MVPs, and that is true all the way through our weekend and our season and awards, including the Geico Defensive Player of the Year, you have a say. Learn more about the Unlimited Club by visiting AUProsports.com and clicking Unlimited Club in the upper right. Remember, it's not just volleyball. You may be a volleyball fan. We hope you're also a fan of lacrosse and softball. You can enjoy the same individual title chase in those sports. It's upcoming. Well, I've made my way down by Team De La Cruz bench. I was going to see if I could sneak in here and ask. Uh, Tama Miyashiro, what conversation she had with her team. We'll wait till after this serve. Yeah, just pull up a chair. Hang out with Tama. Right side, De La Cruz with authority. 
Can I see you there, Salima? I'm over here with, with Coach Tom Amir Shura. Did you tell Betty to do that? Was that the game plan between at the timeout? Yeah, exactly. We said no more than two. But we just keep increasing our pressure and keep going for it. So, yeah. Well, you're playing well. It's been fun to watch already. Yeah, I think we are holding our own, but we just we need to turn a couple balls. You know, they're digging a lot of balls. They're a good team. So we just, the girls actually, not even me, just said keep the pressure on and let's be cleaner in transition. So that's our plan. That's a good plan. I like it. Clean in transition. I like being clean in transition. Yeah. Can you explain that, Salima? I absolutely can. So when they dig balls, they need to handle the ball just a little bit better, allow the setter to get underneath it, and then finish the plays. That's what she's talking about, executing right at the end. They're able to, they're able to control, get the ball, but they need to control it a little bit better. Oh, pretty good control of the net once again. Ebony Wanabu and Taylor Samboni get a hold of Stalzer. Oh, that was a saver there. It would have been 18-15. Pretty good shot from Stalzer. She tried to chip it into the hands there and reset it, and it just went down. Holston blocked. Alieva at the line. Odina Alieva lining up right, getting getting some fire from Taylor Sambothu. He's going to give anybody fire after they make a big play. She's kind of chuckling after that play, but man, you got to get used to it if you're going to be out there with Taylor. Odie's played in Turkey, Italy, and Azerbaijan. Good call from Team King. We continue to go back and forth here. Largest lead at any time has been three. As Katie Carter comes back in to serve. Tough job coming off. Out of the box to serve the ball. Said Katie told me the other day she was serving on the practice court waiting to get called just so she could be warm. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, that's something you can't do in the FIVB. No. <laughs> Don't leave the box. No. Never leave the box. Don't be warm when you come in. Not, not in college either. Same thing. No, it's ridiculous. You're not going anywhere. Here they have exercise cycles. At least you keep the legs going. So you don't tear your tendons immediately when you come in. Overhead for Wanabu, and it's good. And I tell you what's crazy is having Ebony Wanabu and Batania De La Cruz in the back row together. You have two offensive options while you have two more offensive options at the net. Stalls are trying to hit her way out. No, it's into the net. So a tough start for Lindsay Stalzer, who knew she'd be the target. Coming off a rough weekend, hitting 170 now, but that number's been going the wrong direction as of late. Tough when you're being targeted on the serve all the time. That's a lot. It's a lot of pressure on you, physically and mentally. And Shank there. Wanabu with the ace, 21-18. I imagine you're calling a timeout if you're Joe Trinzi. There it is. Gives us a chance to shout out to Morgan and more specifically her parents. She's watching on Twitter and wants an Athletes Unlimited subscription for her birthday. Mom and dad, get on that thing. Mentioned that Ari Cruz hit 386 last weekend, 35 kills. That was kind of the icing on the cake for what is known to be in Ari Cruz, an exceptional international player who was the number one pick in the draft this week. Well, she just does it all. She's so good. She can control the ball as a passer. She has incredible range as an attacker, and I, it made perfect sense why Brie King picked her as her number one pick. Yeah, the fifth number one, fifth different number one pick over five weeks, as you look at the outside hitters, and they're ranked right now. And these are points behind. So you have Jordan Larson to Betania De La Cruz, the gap being 600. You go down to Deja McClendon, it's going to be 1,200. And then I'll recruit Leah Edmond. Leah Edmond inactive this week. So what had been a fine rookie debut for Edmond ends without participating in the final weekend of play. 
66 points. When you see that, remember, that's your Athletes Unlimited points. Seven kills and leading the match with her offense. Start out a perfect three for three. She also likes to zip line. Let's get Ari Cruz out in the trees. Other to go like zip lining <laughs> in Puerto Rico, like it's like for me, it's like out of my habitat instead of like going all the time to the beach or going to like rivers. Like we have a bunch of rivers and that have like cask like waterfalls. It's kind of like something different, like go more for extreme adventure than go like to a relaxed adventure. Ari Cruz having a good time. She said, hey, I'm going to play a couple more seasons and then I'd like to either assistant coach in the NCAA or maybe start a volleyball academy. And then when you talk about Puerto Rico, that is a volleyball crazy island. Absolutely. I mean, there's so many great players that have come out of Puerto Rico uh, to to the United States to play in college. Uh, just a, a high level, but everyone plays there. I, I remember her saying, or maybe it was Noma saying that you just play volleyball. That's just what you do. Right. There's no other sport, really, except baseball. But we play volleyball. That was Noma. Noma says she comes from the center of the country and just everyone plays volleyball. There's nothing else you do. Better pass there, and Gibmeyer gets involved, but it's Wanabu again. Blocked the other way, out of bounds. That was close. I tell you, I'm, I'm standing right next to the court, and I'm like watching Odie play. She's going up with full intention, her big swings, that she's trying to cut it into the block and, and work on getting those tools out of bounds. So she's taking big cuts, but trying to get it to go out of bounds. We have our first challenge. Two challenges per team, per set. There's no way to hold on to them. They're going to challenge this ball in, coming from the Team King side, and say that they blocked it in on the Team De La Cruz side. I'm going to see what everybody else thinks. So Taylor Morgan, no, I want the fan for sure. I'm just going to stand here for a little bit. I want, oh my goodness, this Don't is heaven. Good. It's so it's good. So, good. so was, that, was that ball in? Well, <clears throat> yes. <laughs> I mean, I was sitting, so like I can't see, but like if you cheer hard, like it might, no. they might be like, uh, yeah, it wasn't, you know? For real, that's such a good strategy. I think that's something important to learn. Well, Thank you. you. Didn't do her chest thing, so like I'm kind of debating it might not have been it. Dude, you are so right about the chest thing. Oh, I guess we'll see. Salima. Yes. Wait a second. Did I just hear? <laughs> I was sitting down and couldn't see, but it was definitely in. Was <laughs> that the call? Well, she's. <laughs> yes, that was the call. That sounds like me up there in the booth. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I can't see anything. Things warming up. Remember, Dallas was frozen over when we got here. Mm. It was 15 degrees when Salim and I rolled into town. Currently uh, pushing mid 80s. That ball ruled out of bounds. After review, the on the so the original team. call is confirmed, and it's 22-18. Team Dela Cruz stretching out just the right moment. Good touch. NVA under the ball. Wanabu. Backslide. Oh, Katie Carter tried to get there. Floor looked a little bit wet. Yeah, she was going to make went. that play, and Bree King ended up playing with her hands, and she slipped. Couldn't, couldn't get around it. It was a nice play. Playing on a TerraFlex surface over two underlayers. Kristen Tupac and Ari Cruz trying to take some of the service receive pressure off of Stalzer. Stalzer's seen 348 reception opportunities coming in. There's a perfect pass and a miss out of the big. We are at set point for Team Dela Cruz. What was a competitive set has become the Dela Cruz show now plus six. Set point. That block will do it. Team Delacruz executes their plan perfectly in the first set. Serving Lindsey Stalzer, shutting down a left side attack. That's Bastianelli alongside Hunter for that one. 
That finishes set number one. And now the overall lead is seven. Each player gets those plus 40. Team Dela Cruz dropped just one set all weekend last weekend. So look at how the points work here in Athletes Unlimited. You get 40 points, team points for each set that you win. That goes to each individual. You get a total of 180 points in every given match if you win every single set as well as the overall aggregate score. You can get MVP points, and we saw some new people getting MVP points last week as they had good weeks, and the players all vote, everyone on court votes, as well as you, the fan. 60, 40, and 20 for the different MVP levels, and then the more efficient you are in your individual movements, the more points you score. Tonight's match is presented by Guaranteed Rate. Now for navigating the win, we get an opportunity to check in with Bree King. Bree, competitive first set. What went wrong for you guys at the end of the first? Oh, man, yeah. Really good volleyball for three quarters of that set. Um, I felt like we just untightened everything a little bit at the end there. Um, repeating errors, kind of like our minds weren't totally locked in there. I think at the end, helping each other out, solve problems, and come up with solutions. So I feel like we're right there and ready to get going again. Bree, so what's your conversation going to be with your team? Are you going to have individual talks with, with certain players or just a one, kind of one big general talk about what to how to move forward? Yeah, I think mm, I want to just increase the teamwork it, within the rallies, within the in, in between each point. Like, I feel like we got a little bit not separate, but just not solving problems together. So I think it's more of a general. I, everyone's good. Everyone's locked in. So we'll be good. Bree, thanks. Good luck in the second. Thanks. This has been Navigating the Wind, presented by Mariner Wealth Advisors, helping you navigate your financial future as we look at our setter position. Bree King, number one, in fact, has played every single set. Kelly Hunter came to camp late, but she's been a stalwart. I'll look at each one of the positions tonight. We'll try and keep you updated on the points as we go through this weekend. Important, too, for who's the top setter, middle, Libero by position should be a very interesting follow. And for more information on how to how to set the ball, how it is, well, look no further than our own Slima Rockwell, who set at the international level. So the setter. The setter is like the quarterback of the team. They run your offense and they tell all the hitters where to go and what's going to happen offensively. Sometimes it depends on what's going on in the other side of the net. It might depend on the blockers, the size of the blockers, or their starting position. Sometimes it depends on what's going on on your side of the net. Who do you have in a certain rotation? Who do you want to set to get that big kill? Most of the time, it's a combination of the two. It's the setter's responsibility to tell each hitter what they're going to hit. When I am back row, as a setter, I have three hitters in the front row. I'm going to signal to each hitter this is your call, this is your call, and this is your call. They all know what they're gonna hit, but no one knows who's getting the ball except me. When I'm front row, I do the same thing. As a setter, you now have two hitters with you. I tell the outside what she's gonna hit, run the play with the middle, and here comes the back row attacker filling in those gaps. So it's the setter's responsibility to know the offense, know the opponent, know the defense, and understand what the best offensive options are. Do you know all that, Selima Rockwell? I, I did. I, I knew that. I know that stuff. <laughs> Joe Trinzi working with Team King. And they said, we talked to Bree King. She said, I got everything I wanted in this draft, and we talked to her right away on Tuesday night. Yeah, she was excited about this team, and she, she, still, is, she still is excited about this team. And I think she has good reason to. She has good reason to. She's got the, her number one peak pick that she wanted, filled in with a couple of other players. They just kind of lost steam right there at the end, some passing breakdowns at the end of that, that match. And I'll have a chance to talk to Joe Trinzi and see what he, he talked to Bree King about here in a second. Yeah, Salima, I wonder, we watched last weekend, Kelly Hunter had a team and they did not win a single set. What do you like more about this group? What's different about this group that you think that they're gonna be a little more successful? Well, you know, it's so different, and each team 
as they are put together, all the pieces, it just depends on how they play next to one another and that comfort, that vibe. I, I like the vibe of this team right now. Not that I didn't with Kelly Hunter's team last week. This, this team has the energy. They came out swinging away. A lot of good, positive energy, which I think is going to carry them into this, into this next set. All right, we'll see if the passing can hang on as Bethania De La Cruz brings her team along with Ebony Wanabu and Namaras Velez Agosto, with whom she is quite comfortable in reception. Had Noma, who she's talking to right now, on a number of weeks here in Dallas. Set two underway. Perfect pass from Aleva. That backslide is missed from Bastinelli. Devin Barnett alongside, well, at least in the same building as right now. Former national team setter and captain, Selena Rockwell. Lauren Gibmeyer, former national team middle blocker for Team USA, longtime pro. Back to serve. And she will not be taking home a giant bear as she misses Ebony Wanabu in the back. She will be taking home Piccolo Milo. She will indeed. Her hilarious dog with his beautiful ears. A multitude of dogs here inside the shield, and we've been adding them as we go. And there's some some push for some other ones to make it make it here as well. Yeah, big block by Hunter. Yeah, you're talking about Taiba Honey Parks kids who have put together a petition <laughs> for them to get a dog. And I believe it has been signed by all 44 players yeah. and at this point 16 staff. So as far as we're concerned, Taiba, it is happening. It must happen. It has been decided. We are all in. Cruz off the block. Robadania with the little stab, the little lift. That ball too far. And Team King pays for it. 3 1. Well, there's so much to learn from this play. Even though it was a free ball coming over the net, you see Batania Dela Cruz sent that to the right back area of the court. Tried to work on that zone, getting Bree King caught a little bit, and they can just. Transition out of it and have a, a slide kill. That was almost a two into the middle. You know, it was. That's that's an interesting play. Taylor Morgan can get up. She can hit fast. We've seen that. She's the fastest middle, I think, in front that there is. But laying it up there for her and just letting her go get it is a, is a good plan as well. So if you know you don't have passing on your side, not a bad call. I might ask uh, Joe Trinzi to work my way over here. Oh yeah, dive in there. Yeah, see if he had uh, talked about that a little bit with his setter. Overpass put away, and Taylor Morgan has become an overpass surgeon. All right, I made my way to, to Joe Trinzi. Wanted to know some conversation you had with Bree King. You talked to her a little bit between sets there what was the main theme well just about staying patient using our whole offense just using the whole net not letting them go stack up on one hitter but trying to spread the net negate some of their size with some offensive speed how about with some giant blocks you tell them to do that what's that did you tell them to do that oh, she doesn't need my help to do that <laughs> thanks joe well taylor morgan just gets up so high and gets over the net loves to block the ball Quick close, and all of a sudden, Team King back up on top, 4-3. Tough spot there. That ball dug into the net. Tell you, I was thinking about what Joe Trinzi said about telling Bree King to use the whole net, use the whole offense. A lot of times, when the passing isn't great, it's, it's easy to get kind of one-dimensional, where you just set the same player just setting outside. And that's part of probably why we saw that set to Taylor Morgan there in the middle, just hanging it a little bit, being a little more creative. Joe Trinzi, technical director at various times for Team USA, men and women. Pardon me, on the women's side only, Team USA and Team Canada. And part of the architecture of the AU scoring system that's been employed, the pluses and minuses you see. Coaches have rotated around to predetermined spots, and then the players, the captains, fill in. 
That ball's off the block and far enough. There is no coach draft <laughs> for the captains. There is not. Wouldn't that be interesting? At what at what point do you draft a coach? It'd be like picking a defense in fantasy football. Man, that would be kind of cool. Going outside hitter, middle blocker, Joe Trinzi, <laughs> followed by a libero. That's crazy. We're going to innovate right to the end here. Same kind of off, a little bit one and a half to Morgan, and they're two for two on that play. That is a definite speed change. Taylor Morgan, the fastest quick hitter in the gym. Holston will pin down the right front. Alieva inside and wide. And that was not her usual successful celebration here either. She was going after it, saw that area of the court, thought she had it, just missed a little bit wide. I think if she got over the top of it, she would have had it. It looked like it was a little bit off the right side of her hand. Yep, I thought she was going to have it, actually, now that you say that. I was right behind her when she was swinging. Kevin Barnett up in the booth. Selena Rockwell right down on the floor. Look at Alex Holston. Will she get the side of opportunity here? Yes. They keep Team Dela Cruz in trouble. And Gibmeyer gets a touch. That was a nice deal from Gibmeyer. That was a really nice swing. And you see Betty Dela Cruz, she saw it like she recognized it just like a half a second too late, not even. As soon as the ball went over her head, first she was calling it out. Nice job by Lauren Gibmeyer off the top of the block. Carter back in to serve. Tupac pops it up, perfect. All you need is a little gap for number 29. That's it. And they have that because of Kristen Tubach. Digging balls, controlling balls on that side of the net. I, and the speed to the pin, you'll see she's one on one and takes advantage of that situation. So stalls are trying to get towards positive territory after, after a tough start to this one. Good block, but not quite enough. How about the offense? Carter, right side, off the block and out. Big point for Team King, 10-6. I love that they're using Katie Carter out of the back row. I mean, she is a right side attacker that has been primarily playing defense coming in just to jump serve, but they have made her part of the offense. Carter finally warm now. And it shows in the serve. Dela Cruz way off the net. Blocked again. Bree King at the net. This is part of what has made Bree King so valuable. She's good at the net. She's good on the floor defensively. And Bree King is big. She's long, and she can take care of the net on her own. That one's solidly into the hands of Bree King, and it's a timeout called by Team Dela Cruz. Hope you've been keeping up on what's been going on here because Kylie Pickrell and Holly Tolliver uh, made us all laugh with their fun with Jerry. We brought our orange sleeves and we made some signs. We have three signs, but these are the only ones that really matter. 
60 seconds and 30 seconds. Try to copy yeah. him as much as possible. We wanted to look like Jerry as much as we yeah. could. Yeah. The plan was like come out, be discreet, and just if someone sees us, then we roll with it. And immediately, the second we put our hands up and the down ref, had the sign actually. going, yeah, the down ref pointed it out to Jerry. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it was like everyone on both sides of the court were just staring at us and we're like, hey. <laughs> we made them laugh yeah. and we sided out immediately almost every time. We're yeah, here. and Jerry took off his, his glove, yeah. actually. Yeah. And did the whole like, I love you yeah, to so us. Yeah, very sweet. So he was really, really happy. Sweet. And then he, he took his mitt like, off for yeah. us. Yeah. 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 He was trying to give us the cues, so. <laughs> I mean, truthfully, sure. how would we know when to play if he was not out there ready to go with the orange hand? At one point, I, my shoulder was burning. I mean, even, you know, he gets the little wind up going. All right, 30 start seconds. off. Yeah. Oh, 60. 60, 60 seconds. seconds. Yep, go up, it's 60. Mm -hmm. And we drop, we drop it down. Yep. We hang out for a bit. We're here. Uh, we we're waiting. Some, we up. We got to switch it up. Actually, actually, the team, the teams out there, they're limbering yep. up. We're still on 30. the side. Thirty. Right. Yep. And we Time doing those down, and then he gives us the point, and we go here and wrap it around. We're out. We're out, baby. <laughs> Serve the ball. <laughs> Oh, good fun there with Jerry and the players. Kylie Picker, a way to get involved. And uh, Salima, I think you're uh, you're down there with Jerry. I am down here with Jerry. So Jerry, I've got to ask you a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> got a cult following now. Everybody's loving you. People are wearing the glove all over the internet. What's going on? I don't know. They, you know, the team went with it. They saw my orange gloves, and it was kind of funny. Then the next game, I, they had brought out the orange gloves, and I went, "What is that?" <laughs> And then I saw the 30 and the 60. I'm, oh my God. It's and you. Today, they made a video. And I went, oh my God, this thing's gone viral. Absolutely. So the, here's the real question Did you choose this glove? Is this something you were given? Were you donned the glove? <laughs> no. I, I've done TOC before and I have an orange glove that I use. So the, the officials on the field can see it better. So yeah. No, I wasn't donned it. <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> Well, so after you saw this, did you think, how am I going to even be better at my job? Is that something that even occurred to you? Well, maybe. <laughs> we can go with it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Jerry. We appreciate it. I like how so Jerry's much. working even while you're talking to him. He's still winding <laughs> up and getting it going. He looked a little stressed out you as know. I was asking that last question. He was getting the arm going. I think he went to the uh, magical glove store where, yeah, the glove chooses the person. <laughs> The person doesn't choose the glove. Oh, I love that. That was our director, Lori, with that one. Out of the timeout here, King, Team King with the lead, and they're extending now, doubling up. What a nice response by Team King after a tough ending to the first set in which they had played well for two thirds of it. And a look at Jerry's duties. He's actually the red hat, it's as timeout coordinator. Uh, ATC, as he referred to there, he wears that orange sleeve so that people can see him and be aware that TV is still at a break. And he lets them know when it's okay to go because we are back and you, the viewer, are back and involved. It actually goes back to old football days. They put a guy in a red hat. So when the red hat was on, they knew it was time to play. Of course, we've gotten a lot more technology in that time. And now you can use a red hat or maybe an oven mitt you stole from your house. Either one will work just fine. It's amazing how far we've come. No one's picking up any hot pans at Jerry's place. All the equipment is here. That one is set deep by Brie King. Oh, I like that play. Smart play by Brie King. The ball's tight. She's going to go. Get some action on this ball and she shoves it deep into the corner. Worth mentioning that Salim and I are kind of the point of the spear for everyone that is watching these broadcasts. For you, the viewer and volleyball enthusiasts, as there's another block for Team King. They take complete control of the second set. But there are lots of people who are putting in a ton of effort for you to enjoy Athletes Unlimited Volleyball from our co-founders. Jonathan Soros and John Patrickoff down to everyone out in the truck. The entire staff here inside of Fair Park Coliseum. And all of our sponsorship partners. It takes so many people to make this broadcast. These broadcasts every weekend happen for you. We're just glad that Salim and I get to spend some time with you three nights in a week. 14 to 8, Team King here in the second.
Oh, a little flipper, a little back flipper. And that's a winner. I love the flipper. You see how Dina Oliva kind of gets a little stuck and then flies out there with the back of her hand to make the play. Well, but Tanya De La Cruz does so well. Hits around over the top and off the hands of the block. Yeah, she gives direction to the point of attack. It just doesn't hit the ball straight ahead much. Cruz. But Tanya again. Trying to go high over, but trying to get some fingertips on the left. Man, that was that was the set. I'm I'm standing along the net. That was the exact ball she wanted. You saw her after the play. She kind of wags her finger. Nope, nobody touched it. I was going for it. No word yet on when the Jerry branded gloves are going to get in the AUProSports.com shop. Soon. I'm going to get one. Soon. Wear it at home. Look at that communication on the right side. Morgan. Well, it's like you said, she's a middle moving to the right side a little bit in transition, hitting that ball just behind the setter. I like it. Moving the ball around, moving hitters around in different locations off two feet. Molly Lohman in the serve. And the block from Cruz. We've spent a lot of time talking about the opportunities for Nia Grant or some of the other players as some injuries have happened at the position they play. But for Molly Lohman, it's been the reverse of that. She was the middle who got injured that allowed Nia Grant to excel. And Molly Lohman's kind of been left as that reserve position. It's been a, a tough one for number 23. Nearly back to back blocks for Ari Cruz. But Danya, outside, right on the back line. 17-10. That's going to take take a little time for De La Cruz to kind of find their rhythm again, see if they can chip away at some points. We always talk about the importance of points. The match is tied right now at 35. But Danya De La Cruz out of Dominican Republic has been an international star since her late teens. And nice you get to look at her face now too. You get to see the joy with which she plays as that ball is banged through by Ari Cruz. But Danya plays with both joy and intensity at the same time. Nice that's combination. Yeah, that's an awesome combination. That, but that's why it's hard when she has a mask on, when you see your eyes, you're trying to figure out which one is it right now. Should I be intimidated or happy? Should I run? <laughs> Should I celebrate? And they get a swing here. Holston. Boy, but Tanya was there early and made something of it. Super early, but saw the block, saw what was available to her, and cut this ball down the line, cross her body. You know, I'm over here by Katie Carter, and I'd love to ask her if we have an opportunity about how tough it is to come in cold and jump serve. Yeah, dive in there. Outside, Cruz. Right off the face of Sam Bofi. All right, Katie, I'm going to grab you right now. So how difficult is it to come in, hold, jump serve, and do what you do? Um, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm 35 years old. Um, so you can imagine it's um, it's a it's a power serve, you know, it's um, it's a, you know, jump hybrid, whatever you want to call it. So I, I, I just got to stay warm. I mean, it's just the old fashioned do some burpees on the sidelines or something. And then just once I get in, it's all about breathing. It's all about breathing and getting in the zone as quick as I can and then see what comes. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, you did a nice job and you're doing a nice job. So thanks for that. A little confusion on court there after that play. In any case, Team King's ball and 
control remains 20 to 11. Want to be dug by Tupac. Transition Holston. Up there against Ebony Wanabu. Holston again over the top, dug by Hunter. Ari Cruz pulls it all the way across the floor. Longest rally of the match thus far. Tupac from behind the 10 foot line. Odin Alieva in a nice spot. Finally, Betanya off the hands of Taylor Morgan. What a point. Well, these guys are going hard on defense, hard on coverage, doing a nice job touching the ball off the block as well. And Odina Alieva stepping up. She's got to make plays. She knows she has to make plays and does a nice job here in middle back. Totally different mindset for Odina Alieva, who has occasionally come in and started a set, but never an entire match. She's three for 12 right now. Zero efficiency, but she's contributing in other ways. Seen a lot of serves. Benefiting her side. Morgan over the top. Even more impressive was that pass. I'm standing right next to Vitania De La Cruz when she cracks that serve. So much pace, so much power, and Ari Cruz handled it beautifully. Mentioned our score earlier was tied. The overall currently king 39-37. So back in the lead, erasing what was a first set loss of by seven. Oh, decent dig on him to follow it up there at the net as it went over was Team King. I'm Taylor Sambothy just going hard, swinging, swinging away at the ball, making a really nice play on that over dig. Yeah, I think she got a piece of Lauren Gibbemeyer there reaching over and checking to see if Lauren was all right. You will get some incidental contact occasionally. Gibbemeyer right back. Tight back slide. Now they'll go for the same rotation here. Just six substitutions are available in Athletes Unlimited Volleyball. A little shout out to Sherry Carter, Katie Carter's mom, who's watching. Looking for an ace serve here from your daughter. Hope things are beautiful in mud season there in Steamboat Springs. NVA under it. Wanabu putting it away. Remember, this set might be lost at 22-14, but the overall is just one point difference currently. Ebony Wanabu had a lot of line open, but man, she went hard cross court across her body here. I'm looking for a century set. I want it to be tied at the end of two, so all 100 points are awarded by one score in that third set. And Stalzer gets in rhythm. The first time we've really seen her in, in good rhythm on the left. Yeah, it's been it's been nice. They came out different mentality, different strategy, moving some people around, freeing her up a little bit. She's not getting as many swings as she was in that first set, and I think that makes a huge difference. 23-14. Trying to stay close in the overall. Team Dela Cruz. Odie. Oh, that was a nicely done roll shot. Odie again, this time banging. Bastianelli having to handle multiple free balls. Harry Cruz again. Second shot is long. But a touch called. And we'll have a challenge right away. But Dania De La Cruz says, no, we did not touch that. We will not face a set point. Yeah, she called that immediately. And whether she believed it or not, she said, OK, we're, we need to slow this down. We've got one. Let's use it. See what happens. Bastinelli reaching into that gap there. 
Looks like it clears Hunter. We're gonna have to get a look from behind to see if it is the right hand of number 55, Ali Bastianelli, that gets a hold of that thing. Trying to wrap it back into the from that seam. I'm gonna try to make my way over there. The all-time Big Ten block assist leader and all-time leader in blocks from Illinois. I'll tell you, no, no cut, no touch was called. Based on what I've seen here so far, we're gonna have a hard time overruling that. From the angles we've seen thus far. Michelle Prater in the booth. I'm making my way. Devaney McClarty is on the stand. I got here too late, dang it. I know she's not gonna tell me. And as expected, the call will stand. Oh, actually, it's reversed. We were told it would stand, and it has been reversed. Allie Bastianelli knows for sure. Not too much of a fuss from her, so our referee crew does a good job. We are at set point. Block for the set, Ari Cruz, who regularly has closed sets, 25-14. And a 43-39 reversal. After trailing by seven, heading into the second set, Team King now leads by four. What a job by the women in purple. Every one of our players was asked to talk about self-belief, maybe a time of reflection, how it affected their careers. Here is Taylor Morgan, who played her collegiate ball in Minnesota with our Believe You Will. 2019, we played Creighton in the tournament. It was at home, and every every game we play, we're supposed to not underestimate the, the opponent, right? And we definitely went in thinking that. We're like, oh, we're ranked higher than them. It's gonna be it's gonna be a game, but we're gonna win. It's that's it that's the end of the story. Um, well, they started to play really well, and we were just like caught off guard a little bit. Um, and then just, I would mess up block after block after block, and I'm like, I'm liter my, literally, my job is to block, and I cannot do that. What is going on? And I just really was like, I'm gonna lose this game for us, and I'm a senior. Like, I've been here, done that. Like, it shouldn't be anything too crazy, but I definitely started to cry, and in the game, in the middle of the game, my goggles started to fog up. And I'm like, this is so embarrassing. And looked at my mom and she just kind of gave me a nod and was like, it's gonna be okay. And I'm just like, let's do it. And then I got a block and I was like, oh, thank you goodness. I'm out of rotation, like this is good. Like I'm out, like whatever. But that was kind of like my turning moment. Like I gotta believe in myself, you know, like we are good enough. I am good enough. We're fine. I made a mistake. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Well, moving on into this league has been Taylor Morgan. She now has 19 blocks, hoping to crack that top five. Leon Sabeldin with leadership, but it is crowded there. So much to be decided as to who is the top blocker in Athletes Unlimited. Tied for eighth there, you see Taylor Morgan. She's been doing an outstanding job for her side. And let's take a look at some of the great stuffs of Athletes Unlimited and our stay here in Dallas. Mans Larson blocked. Big block there, Atkinson. And it pays off with a stuffed block. Give him iron. Batania blocked one on one by Lowe. Big double block. Deja McClendon one on one wins. We'll have more of that this weekend for you. 43 39, Team King with a dominant second set, and they have the overall headed into the third set. Kevin Barnett alongside Salima Rockwell. We're getting ready for the third, but let's send you to spend a little time with Key Michael, our vlogger, for our entire time here.
Thank you. <laughs> Let me take you over to the field trip, Aaron. I think I've made a great impression on these um, 45 girls here because <laughs> you're everyone's I mean, favorite person. What it's supposed to say is um, favorite person. Yeah, exactly. Aaron Ferris, Aaron Ferris, Aaron Ferris. Yeah, Aaron exactly. <laughs> but then the uh, Aaron Ferris is what killed me. So I want to know who did this one, <laughs> specifically this one. Uh, Aaron Fairs. <laughs> I was asking Aaron, how do we cash our certificates to spend time in the parents' basement with her? How does that happen? Yeah, she didn't really give us a good answer. No. So we're working on that. I have my voucher. I want to know how to spend it. I think you need to because you need to be there. We're here next year. It's definitely happening. For sure. Definitely happening. There. Tonight's match is presented by Guaranteed Rates. As you get a look at our beautiful facility inside Fair Park Coliseum. A unique treasure of Fair Park here in Dallas. A rather incredible history in the Dallas area. Fair Park has its origins going all the way back to 1886. And the nearby Cotton Bowl first hosted the Red River Showdown in 1929. That a football game that started in 1900. Think about that. And this building was built in 1955, so 66 years ago. And for the first time hosting professional women's volleyball this year. Third set underway, Hunter with the dig. Stalls are on the other side. Holston knifes it underneath Sambothi. I think she surprised herself with that swing. She kind of took a little bit off of it. See this a nice set. Kind of slows down. It was a little funky on that swing. And snuck it, snuck it through the block, around the block. Big, high, towering dig. That'll be brought back. Odie underneath it again with the right hand. What a set from Ebony. Oh, Dina, Olieva. Look at her, this ball has no pace on it. She lays out with one hand and a beautiful set by Ebony Wanabu to finish. Brianna Holman, who makes her appearance in this match here in set number three. Won a national title on the same day she graduated college, but alongside yeah, Kelly Hunter in 2017. Came in off the reserve list, has seen limited action. Takes advantage here as another serve is considered an ace. And Taylor Sambothi has picked up her service game. I'll tell you what, over the last couple of weeks, she goes back there. She has a nice, flat, deep serve. Sometimes it moves on you and drops on you. She can rattle off three or four points every time she's at the service line. Yeah, that's 11 aces now for Sambothi on the season. Good touch by Morgan. She'll get in transition and take the blocker with her. Benefiting Cruz. 3-2, third set. And all of this is because of that perfect play off the block by Tupac. Beautiful touch, got two blockers with King and Morgan. No block on the outside. Blocked by Cruz once again. Come on, Ari, I see you, Ari Cruz. I tell you, you don't have to be huge, you have to be in the right spot. Look at that, left hand. Pressing over, nice shuffle move, exactly where she needs to be on FP. That's got to feel good. Oh, that's a fun way to get to 3-3, 46-42. Betty 
High hands, deep corner line. Thanks to our presenting court partner, Geico, for their support of Athletes Unlimited. Set three, Kevin Barnett alongside Selima Rockwell. Match one of two on the evening, wherever you may be. Thanks for joining us on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Daily Motion, and Facebook Live. We will be on Fox Sports 2 tomorrow night, same two times as this evening. And then we'll be on CBS Sports Network on Monday to wrap the season and award the championship. Wanabu inside the block and down. I tell you, this is a ball that normally scores for Taylor Morgan. She gets up quick. And look at that touch by Brianna Holman. That ball normally is on the floor. Nice play by Holman. Uh, even better finish by Wanamu. That ball might have been out. Doesn't matter now. Nice move by Holman. That one finds the floor directly from Holston. Now looking at Alex Holston's numbers, that's going to be her fifth kill. But Holston's been consistent here. Five kills on 17. Been blocked once, hit no balls out. Holman up big, cruise of the dig. Holston forward momentum in the kill down the line. Okay, I like how Team Team King is playing defense. Cruz does a nice job getting in that seam on that 31 in the right spot. And a beautiful turn by down the line by, by Holston. Waterbury. Nice high swing. That's what Team Dela Cruz needs to do to continue to work their offense, work the edges of the block over and around it right now. And we want to be, of course, able to do all of that. Stalls are another high ball. So you go to Holston, it's too tight. She wipes it off the block of Alieva. So three kills in a row for Alex Holston. Nice tool by Alex Holston off the edge of the block. Taylor Morgan now serving the ball was tight. She saw it, felt it, felt the hands of Alieva, and threw it out of bounds. Morgan, more defense. And a standing kill for Stalzer. Yeah, that was an odd play. I think uh, Kelly Hunter was kind of just running in a little bit. I'm not sure where Stalzer was going actually on that on that set, but she was running in as well. A fortunate break, break for Team King. More defense from Team King. A little bit too fast and low overhead. This communication, no one can get ahead of the ball. The rally that wouldn't die. Holston finally finishes it off. She'll end it. Put the rally out of its misery. <laughs> it was a really good rally. Initially, I was thinking, look at all this good defense, and then it got weird. Yeah, then you need to take it out behind the bar, and it was past its <laughs> useful time. Things went awry. <laughs> what a series of unfortunate events over and over again. <laughs> Bree King and the very unfortunate long rally that would not perish. 8 6, they lead.
Midpoint set three, we have a timeout on court. And athlete causes allow players to play in part of their season for the benefit of a nonprofit organization. They partner with that cause. Here is Taylor Morgan on her part. The reason I chose Open Arms of Minnesota is because number one, it's about food and I love food and that kind of stuck out to me first. And then the name also, Open Arms, you just feel welcomed and accepted and valued. Um, but also as I kind of dug a little deeper into it, it's giving food to people with extreme mental or debilitating illnesses or just dis disabled, they can't get it for themselves. So it's just like, you know, and food is essential to life, obviously. So it's just kind of giving back a necessity that sometimes people aren't allowed or aren't able to get for themselves to just kind of lift one more burden off their shoulders. You know, they're already going through so much. I just love what Open Arms of Minnesota is doing, and I just love that I get to be a part of it. So much more than just volleyball, all these players playing with nonprofits and trying to benefit other areas of the planet, not just be a part of professional sports. You know, when we talked to all these players, that this was probably one of the things they were excited the most about the league. Having the opportunity to play for someone else, to do something important, do something for the world, and someone outside of themselves. And I think Athletes Unlimited has done such a nice job of building this and empowering these young women to, to support their causes and, and have this opportunity. Yeah, an opportunity to play and an opportunity to play today specifically for Alex Holston, who, whose team has won five of six points and she has four of the five. I tell you, I'm not, I'm not really surprised. Like every time she came in over the course of the last couple of weeks, she got it done. She's got a fast arm that's hard to defend. It's hard to read. She gets on it quick. Right now, Bree, Bree King is flinging it back there to her. So eight for 22. Yeah. That's Only that. been blocked once. That's a good night so far. As Aaron Fares checks in, we wanted some Aaron Fares, now we get it. She immediately gets served. Oh, right past Morgan, just outside the block. See, but Tanya Dela Cruz slow it down a little bit. Doesn't take a full swing, but finds that hole. It's her vision that creates all of these things. She sees the block so well. Changes made for Team Dela Cruz here as they controlled the first set. They have not found a solution for Alex Holston. She collects her ninth kill. She now and Cruz are pacing the offense. Cruz with 11. Now Alex Hostin is moving the ball around. You saw her hit a couple balls down the line. She's beat the seam hard to the floor and now hitting the edges around that sideline as well. So mixing up her shots and that's big. 52-46. Oh, jump serve ace. There it is, mom. Noelia's watching. <laughs> She's watching. She's cheering. She's stealing stuff. She's excited. <laughs> Just out of the reach of Cruz. That gets Katie Carter off the line. She has three aces on the year. And one helping to extend the lead here critically in the third set of night number one the last weekend. Defensive play of the game it was Odina Alieva who got the start, picked up some balls on her side. 
Oh, she's making some big plays defensively. Certainly not just that defensive play of the game. Nice stretch by Tupac. That ball's good, but not over. Oh, those ones will catch you by surprise coming off someone else's platform. And sometimes it's coming in faster off the platform than it is off the swing. You see Stalzer is still trying to get herself together here. Oliva looking over, a little concerned for number 29 in purple. Looks like she's laughing a bit. Almost like taking a straight right when it's coming off the platform. It's coming off fast. Make your eyes water. Yes, it will. And Joe Trinzi would like a timeout. Maybe give Stalls her a second to recover as they lead 11 9. So both sides have used a timeout here in the third set. Overall score 54 48 in favor of Team King. If you're in favor of supporting the league, you have an opportunity to purchase something in support. Time is almost up to own this piece of history. First ever Topps trading card set for professional volleyball. Sets are available to purchase until 5 p.m. on April 2nd. This will be the only opportunity to own this unique collectible set. Hurry up and get yours at Topps.com. As we look at our top single match performances, this is total points in the week in which they occurred. Last week was quite the week. You just saw Deja McClendon there on the card. That might be worth more after 435. <laughs> that was a big week for her. And I tell you, I love me some Jordan. I love Jordan Larson, but I was bummed <laughs> that she, she snuck ahead Deja in this category. She beat her by one point. In the very next match. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Good to see a lot of players getting involved there. As John said, he's ordered two sets of the tops. Cards, good job, John. And uh, we have an update on Morgan. She said, yes, my dad just made me an Unlimited Club Pro member. So Morgan, don't forget to vote for AVP or MVP after this. Nice work, Dad. We're gonna give out that Geico Defensive Player of the Year. And we have some nominees for you. First, it's the law firm. Nomaris Velez and Agosto. She has been so solid throughout the entire league, playing hard defense. I mean, she can pass well. She goes hard defensively, covers everything. And it's a wonder that Betty, Betty likes to pick her all the time. Kristen Tupac on the other side. Well, Kristen Tupac, is, she's going after it tonight, too. She wants this award. She knows it's, it's close, it's at hand. But Kristen Tupac playing hard all the time. Yeah, Tupac averaging almost 4.2 digs per set. That is number one in the league. And how about a nominee at the net for defensive player? I like it. And Molly McCage has proven that she could be at the net as defensive as any of those, those little ones in the back row, can, taking full control, using those hands and pressing over the net. Molly McCage is one of the best blockers that you're going to see. Not only that, but she's also leading in efficiency for the entire league. Molly McCage, the total package as you look at Tupac and Namaras Velez Augusto. One from Puerto Rico, one hailing from New Mexico these days after an outstanding career at Iowa State. Chris Tupac, part of the, uh, the dog mafia here in Dallas. She's got a couple of them. I saw them roaming around the Coliseum the other day yeah. on their own. They're just cruising around. They own the place. Warming up. The other team was on the field, <laughs> on the court warming up. Dogs are out there. Backslide goes wide. No touch called. Ari Cruz wanted to touch. And Joe Trinzi says, yeah, go ahead. Challenge it up. There was no touch. And Gibmeyer actually thought it was in as well. So somebody thought they saw a touch. Gibmeyer thought it was in. I think you're going to challenge that it was in, as I see Devin McCarty indicating as such. Michelle Prater back in the booth. Well, 
it's been such an interesting match. You know, it started off <laughs> Team De La Cruz in like a tight, tight first set. Then he's extended that, and you thought that momentum would carry into set two. It was 16-14 at the technical timeout. Team King with the lead. It ended 25-18. Team King lost. Yeah, that's crazy. So you look at that. That would be a 9-2 run to finish out the first set. Big runs of points, and we're only five points difference right now in the overall match. So it's going to be huge. This this is a big point. That looks in to me from here. Although. It is close indeed as to whether you think that shadow and that ball impact the line. Second set would belong to Team King as they made a mid set break up to 12 6. Line job, look at him. Look at him keeping an eye on the ball, then making the call right after it bounces over his head. He's got his eye on it, he's looking at it. Boom, there goes the flag. That's gonna work. It was 25-14 for Team King, so we entered 43-39 in the overall. And it's currently 54-49, Team King hanging on to that overall lead. Remember, 100 points left to go here in set number three, as that one is reversed. Selena Rockwell has called it correctly. Hope you did it at home. And now Betty De La Cruz. You can't challenge a challenge. <laughs> She's smiling. Having a little fun. Entering the match and now serving. Molly Lowman. Betty De La Cruz still having fun. Her team down 12-9. Plenty of time to come back. The trail by five in the overall. Lowman with the dig. And that chip is no good. Thought it might have caught the Donnie De La Cruz, but it did not. Taylor Zambothi now serving for Team De La Cruz. Zambothi already has one ace. Way to break off an angle. Not easy to do, especially when you're fading from the other direction. Kind of a push play coming from right to left. You'll see her come in and then kind of go against the grain there to cut that ball around the block. Fans are wanting to know where Selima Rockwell has gone. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm back in the booth. <laughs> no more to, roaming. I'm next to Kevin. The free range Selima is over. <laughs> you missed your opportunity. 56-49. Bears good pass. Holman terminates. So Brianna Holman was a substitute, as was Aaron Fairs, both involved here. Yeah, and what a connection with these two. I like that side set by, by Kelly Hunter, who knows where to find Brianna Holman, and she's just going to get it done. That one inside the block. It looked like that ball was stuffed straight down, but the block wasn't over the net in time, and it went between the net and the, and the block. 14-11, seven-point overall lead. Looked like Stalzer was up early. She was. She was super early on that play. Hanging, waiting for it, and see Batania De La Cruz takes advantage of that. It's off the top of the block. She's, she's kind of waiting. Yep. A little bit early. Batania likes the wrist away. It's into the other gap instead, and Holman cleans it up. What a nice move. Rihanna Holman is three for six. There's the big rip down the line. Look at this ball coming. A little bit of movement on it, but Holman does a nice job getting her feet back and keeping the ball in front of her. That's not an easy play when it's not right on top of the net. Within one here in the third. Yeah. 
Good reset from Stalzer. Halston, tough swing. Rips it anyway. And Dela Cruz misses. A little frustration set in for Bethany Dela Cruz. Unable to convert. Big rip by Holston off the net. Man, she's going across her body. It's a big swing out of bounds. Morgan a little too far. That ball played from below the level of the net, totally legal. Nice cover. Fairs. Tips it in front of Stalzer. Couple of nice plays by Fairs right during that rally. A good stuff block. Not stuff block, excuse me. A nice block to kind of get them going and reset. And then a tip right over the top. That's a that's a hard tip in front of Stalzer. Stalzer looked like she stepped in a hole or something on the yeah. way over there. Holman can't get that tip, and Alex Holston continues her efficient performance in her very first start now. 10 kills on 27 swings. If you would like to know more about Alex Holston or any of our players, visit AUProsports.com. You can get your athletes unlimited gear as well. And don't forget to follow us on social, AU Pro Sports, for exclusive insider content. You can not only get more information on the athletes, you can get more on the nonprofit partners for whom the athletes are playing. As Carter misses that one, but earlier quite effective with the ace, and she's been swinging out of the back row. To back misses, no harm, no foul. And 17 15. Team Dela Cruz starting to run out of time. No panic yet, but they trail by six in the overall. And two here in our set. Ferris has that one thrown back. And Cruz jams it down. That was reminiscent of Bree King. Yeah. Nice job with two hands, not quite a block, just kind of takes it with two hands and throws that ball down. I tell you, this is, this is an important, important point and set for Cruz. And we talk about those overall points and what we're looking at on the leaderboard. Question is, do you use your next challenge? And the answer is yes. That's two challenges from Team King. Remember, they had one overturned earlier. Give Meyer hit it in. This one's even closer. Yep. Just to see just that end line kind of straight on would be more helpful to see. It's tough. Initially ruled out. Keep that in mind. I can't see if that ball flattens on the line. Right there. If, you, know, you have to look at the side of the ball to really get it. You're going to have a hard time overturning it on that. Right. I think we might be looking at that ball being confirmed out. And the overall 18 16 standing. So this is a better angle to see. That's tough. Already, Team King has bested the performance last week from Team Hunter, who also wore the purple jerseys. They've won a set. They're leading in the overall right now, looking like they might take the overall as they lead by six, even with that ball out of bounds. And that is confirmed that it is 
Out of bounds and remains De La Cruz ball. After review, the point stays with Team Cruz. We keep talking about these overall points. Big points left here. This third set determines the, the last 40 of the set and the 100 of the match. Bethany De La Cruz with a nice touch on Gibmeyer. Wanabu long. But just some of the big point scoring swings from both Bethany De La Cruz and Wanabu have not worked out. Not tonight. Not tonight. Couple of uncharacteristic misses from Mebney Wanabu. Betty. Right off Gibby. Point Team De La Cruz. That's where Betty De La Cruz, she has another conversation with Kelly Hunter. And they talk about the flight of the ball, talk about what they need. Yeah, efficiency-wise, Wanabu and De La Cruz not having their best matches, not their worst either, but I think they need a little more as that ball is hit off the block and out of bounds. Katie Carter, I tell you, it's been nice having her there in the back row, having her stay in before she serves the balls, come out. Now she's staying in the back row and is an offensive option for Team King. The two-headed opposite is winning for Team King 2017. A service adds to that, Brie King. Tell you, it makes it so tough. She keeps that arm high. You see that flat hand, stiff wrist. That's what gets that action on the ball. Hits it dead center. That's what gets it to move and drop. Near second ace. Good opportunity to score. I go to Holston. Me too. But what do I know? The veteran Cruz. <laughs> Cruz now with 12 kills. Holston with 10. Next is Taylor Morgan with seven. And hitting at 500. Oh. Holman, a laser down the line. Yeah, that was a big swing down the line. So the overall has been decided. Just seven points remaining for Team Dela Cruz, but an eight point lead for Team King. That is plus 60 for Team King. The question is now, will they carry 140 for the victory in this set? They need three more. Cruz. She's been asked to do a lot with high balls, and she has. I'll tell you what, she comes in, in it with a big approach. She has great vision of the court, keeps that ball in front of her. See how deep she is. Can't even see her on the court when that ball's off the net. And that's the key to having success as an outside hitter out of system. Young players, if you want to emulate someone in their approach, look at the double arm lift of Ari Cruz. For that matter, her defense. Kristen Tupac with a nice second touch. Off the antenna. That'll be another point for Team King. And they are at a set point looking for 140 total team points and the overall victory already secure. Now serving set point, Ari Cruz. A block finishes it. Taylor Morgan and Team King with the win. It's that big stuff block that has been so good tonight for Team Clank King. Taylor Morgan, very fitting that she gets over there, finishes the play for her team. Team Dela Cruz could just never find their groove except for one moment in the end of